Prince Harry is being hailed a modern-day Prince Charming after he was spotted toasting with water alongside a pregnant Meghan Markle. The 34-year-old and his wife were at a state dinner at the Grand Pacific Hotel when the Duke of Sussex raised his water glass in celebration while everyone else was drinking champagne. Before long, royal-obsessed Twitter users flocked to the social media platform to sing his praises. Also sweet of Prince Harry to join her, Meghan, in her water toast, one tweet read. Another fan tweeted, that's a supportive husband with several clapping emojis. It's unclear whether the father-to-be intends to avoid alcohol throughout the entirety of Meghan's pregnancy or just during toasts and other occasions that might leave her feeling left out. The state dinner marked the first time the Duchess gave photographers a good look at her growing baby bump. She was seen cradling her bump, which she outfitted in a Fijian blue dress designed by Safiya. Meghan, 37, paired the dress with drop diamond earrings as well. The palace didn't reveal where the earrings were from. The occasion wasn't only special because Prince Harry and Meghan got to show off their impending bundle of joy. During his speech at the event, Prince Harry revealed that his grandmother, the Queen, stayed at that very hotel during her own royal travels. This visit is particularly nostalgic for us as a young married couple, my grandparents stayed in this very hotel, the Grand Pacific, a number of times over the years. Queen Elizabeth visited five times, in 1963, 1970, 1973, 1977 and 1982. Prince Charles visited three times, in 1970, 1985 and 2005. During the speech, Prince Harry also thanked the people of Fiji for all their support during his and Meghan's trip, adding that they had been overwhelmed by the warm reception they received. It really is a privilege to be here, he said. Prince Harry and Meghan have said little else about their pregnancy at this time. The soon-to-be proud papa did, however, express that he's hopeful his first child with Meghan will be a girl. Due to royal protocol, he and Meghan are likely not to find out what they're having. If they do, there's little to no chance they'll share that information with the public. That's not all Prince Harry and Meghan Markle have been up to during their visit to Fiji. Here are a few other highlights from the royal trip below. Meghan Markle delivered her first official speech of the royal tour in Fiji on Wednesday morning with an emotional address about education, as she visited the University of the South Pacific with Prince Harry. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex are on their 16-day landmark tour of Oceania, which comes only a week after the royal duo announced Meghan's pregnancy. The pregnant Duchess scaled back her schedule in the past two days to rest but she returned in full force today and attended the University of the South Pacific alongside Prince Harry. Both royals made speeches to university students, and it was a landmark moment for Meghan as it was the first time she had delivered a speech on the royal tour. It was also only her second official speech since entering the royal family, following her first speech at the launch of her cookbook in London. The Duchess started her remarks with the traditional greeting of Beulah Inukia and then addressed the students with a moving address about education. She announced two new grants for the Fiji National University and the University of the South Pacific. She said, As a university graduate, I know the personal feeling of pride and excitement that comes with attending university, from the moment you receive the acceptance letter to exams you spend countless late nights studying for. I am also fully aware of the challenges of being able to afford this level of schooling for many people around the world, myself included. It was with scholarships, financial aid programs and earnings from a job on campus that went directly towards my tuition that I was able to attend university and without question it was worth every effort. Everyone should be afforded the opportunity to receive the education that they want, but more importantly the education that they have the right to receive. And for women and girls in developing countries, this is vital. Meghan added, So I am very pleased to announce today that two new grants will be awarded to Fiji National University and the University of the South Pacific, allowing each of them to run workshops, which empower their female staff. 
This means that female faculty members are able to encourage others to follow in their footsteps and enter higher education and that more women become part of the decision-making process in academic institutions. The Duke of Sussex also delivered a speech to students, during which he launched four new Queen Elizabeth scholarships. Before taking the stage, the royal duo enjoyed a colorful performance on climate change by singers and dancers at the university, after being presented with traditional Fijian lace adorned with flowers. Meghan was wearing a pink dress by designer brand figure, while Harry sported a blue shirt with a pattern of white leaves. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry were given a traditional welcome in Fiji when they arrived for a three-day visit as part of the royal tour, with all eyes on the Duchess of Sussex after it was revealed she is pregnant. Meghan wore a dress by Australian label Zimmerman, a Stephen Jones hat, earrings which were a gift from the Queen and a bracelet which was a gift from the Prince of Wales. She and Harry were met at Suva's Nazauri Airport by Fiji's High Commissioner Melanie Hopkins and Chief of Protocol. Jonathan Itagivata. The pair disembarked their Qantas charter flight to light rain and were introduced to the Han Frank Bainamra, Fiji's prime minister and his wife, Maria, Rotimu Mukapa, leader of the opposition, Alessandro Trapia, the High Commissioner's wife and Rear Admiral William Napoto. The Duchess was presented with a bouquet of flowers by a flower girl from the chiefly island of Ba, the island home of Ratu Ape and Siakaka Ba who ceded Fiji to Britain in 1874, before Harry made his way to a dais on the runway. Harry and Meghan observed a royal salute, and the Duke was then invited to inspect the Guard of Honour before Harry and Meghan left for their next engagement, a meeting with Fiji's president, Jayoji Conrad. As the couple's convoy left the airport, hundreds of well-wishers had lined the road out of the airport, waving flags and cheering. They headed to Albert Park for a welcome ceremony, known as the Virkra Kravi Vakavinyo, embodying Fijian cultural identity and heritage. Harry and Meghan sat on a stage as he was given the whale's tooth, a sign of wealth, in the Vakasabu, before he was given kava, a traditional drink thought to have medicinal qualities which is made from a mashed plant root, and which was wrung out into a bowl and passed to him. He told the crowd, Bula Venica. The Duchess and I look forward to meeting as many of you as possible during the next two days and celebrating the links and close friendship between Fiji and the United Kingdom. He signed off Venica, or thank you, to cheers and laughter. To close the ceremony, the couple watched a meek, a traditional dance with Harry leaning forward in his seat. Dozens of people from the village of Naklo took to the Albert Park turf to perform for the Duke and Duchess. The area is known for its strong links to the armed forces. Harry's grandparents, the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh, attending the same event during their Commonwealth tour in 1953, which just as was the case with Harry and Meghan, marked their first royal tour since getting married. The couple, who are expecting their first baby in spring, are currently part way through a 16-day tour which also includes engagements in New Zealand and Tonga with Meghan having scaled back her list of official engagements slightly to stay rested. During their time in Australia, the couple were presented with the first presents for their new baby from Governor-General Sir Peter Cosgrove and his wife Lady Cosgrove, who gave them a toy kangaroo and its joey during a reception at their residence Admiralty House in Sydney. The royal couple also fitted in a visit to Taronga Zoo before visiting crowds outside the Sydney Opera House. After this they headed for Dubbo, where Harry and Meghan learned about the impact of the severe drought which has been plaguing the rural New South Wales city and were promptly drenched by a heavy downpour in Victoria Park. They then travelled south to Melbourne, where Meghan tried her hand at Aussie rules before being presented with a mini lifeguard uniform by the stars of reality TV show Bondi rescued during a trip to the world-famous beach. Harry reached new heights as he raised the Invictus Games flag alongside three competitors and an ambassador on the Sydney Harbour Bridge on the eve of the opening ceremony. Saturday saw the Duke wear the tropical dress of his Blues and Royals Regiment as he opened the extension of the Anzac Memorial in Sydney which commemorates the war dead from Australia and New Zealand. 
an electrical storm delayed the start of the Invictus Games opening ceremony on the Saturday evening. However, the Duke eventually took to the stage on the forecourt of the Sydney Opera House to praise the Invictus generation who have shown the true meaning of resilience. He added, the Invictus generation has chosen to serve their countries in conflicts that are complex and dangerous and far too often this dedication goes unrecognized. They have reminded us all what selfless duty really looks like. The couple will return to Australia on Friday to watch competitors take part in the Invictus Games ahead of Saturday's closing ceremony. Oh,